Welcome to the political edition of MassapequaNews.com. I'm Christine Somer, and with me is the Town of Oyster Bay Supervisor, John Venditto. Welcome. Well, thank you, Christine. It's nice to be here. Tell me what it means to be the Town of Oyster Bay Supervisor. You know, I always felt that anyone who's interested in government and politics should spend one day as a town supervisor because you get to see it all. You know, it's, it's our job as the town government to um, pick up the garbage, pick up the recyclables, uh, build and maintain parks and beaches, uh, build and maintain the roadways, provide for the infrastructure of this town, uh, clear away the floodwaters, plow the snow. We're the ones who provide programs and activities for everyone from 1 to 101 years old. We're the ones who bring the summer concerts and the winter concerts and, you know, the list of, of municipal services goes on and on. You could be on the phone with the governor of the state of New York one moment talking about a very pressing uh, environmental issue and a few minutes later you're talking to your next door neighbor about, you know, a sorely needed stop sign in your community and everything in between. It's a great job. I love doing it. Uh, but I guess the, the, uh, the job description is that um, we have to take care of uh, the needs and problems that confront our residents uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's well known that you are a tremendous community man. You rear your family here, your children are off to law school, practicing law, or even in the reporting industry. But what most people don't know is that your dad was an immigrant. Do you want to touch a little bit on where you came from family-wise? Sure, I don't mind telling you, it's something I love to talk about. My father was actually born in 1915 in Italy. Uh, he came here in 1930 as a 15-year-old, and I don't mind telling you that the rules were a little different back then. Uh, when you came to this country, you had to get in line, uh, and you had to uh, assimilate you know, into the society and into the culture. You could, at the same time, within the four walls of your home, you know, respect your, the traditions from, you know, from whence you came, but when you stepped out of that house, you were an American. Uh, I, I think we've lost the handle on that. I don't mind telling you that the federal government has been sorely lacking uh, on this type of discipline for, oh, uh, upwards from 30 to 40 years now, and, and shame on them if they're watching. I hope they're getting this message. And the saddest part of all, uh, the one who suffers is the immigrant, because what's happening today is immigrants are coming into this country, they're not getting the benefit of the indoctrination uh, that someone like my father got, and instead they're being left to roam and wander aimlessly through our society, and uh, that's not good, that's how you get into trouble. So I think the federal government has to do a little bit better job here, but yes, my father was an immigrant, and uh, I was brought up by wonderful parents. Uh, on uh, old school values. I was born and raised in Massapequa in 1949. Uh, we lived in the woods back then. There were only four houses on my parents' block. And uh, on the day I became the Oyster Bay Town Supervisor, those four houses became 40 houses. You know, ten times more people, noise, pollution, cars and garbage and so on and so forth. But I had a wonderful upbringing here uh, in Massapequa in the town of Oyster Bay. So much so that when I got married and my wife and I had our three children, uh, we saw fit to uh, raise them in the town of Oyster Bay as well, and God willing, I'll see my grandchildren grow up here someday too. We'll, we'll see how it goes, but uh, things really went well for me. Your dad gave you probably the best head start in your education while you wanted to go off to another school. Tell, tell me about that. When I was 18, I wanted to be a writer. I was going to write the great American novel. I was going to be a great journalist. So I went to my dad one day, and you know, back then you felt your father was sitting on a throne, and uh, I said to him, you know, Dad, I've made a decision. I want to go study journalism at Marquette University out in Wisconsin because that's the hub of journalist, uh, you know, academia. And uh, he said to me, son, you can go to any college anywhere in this great nation, but the only one I'm going to pay for is St. John's University. It was good enough for my brother who is now a pharmacist, it's good enough for you. So that's how I made my decision to go to St. John's uh, University and on to St. John's Law School. So you see, I was practical uh, even back then. But I got a great education at, uh, at St. John's. Uh, it was very good to me. One of my sons graduated St. John's you know, Law School as well. My, my other son is presently in Columbia, and you know about my daughter, the reporter. Uh, so things worked out very well for me on that score. Uh, something very interesting, when I left St. John's Law School, I made a decision that I so much appreciated and so much loved being, you know, born and raised in this community that I wanted to stay here. 
And so uh, I walked up and down Broadway in Massapequa, in North Massapequa, and knocked on the door of any lawyer who would talk to me. And I just begged for a job. I, I'll work for free. I'll work for minimum wage. I'll do whatever I have to do. Uh, but give me a job. I want to be a lawyer. And I was very fortunate to get a job in a law firm right here on Broadway in Massapequa, where one of the partners was a uh, sitting congressman at the time. And by osmosis, I, I got drawn into all of that political intrigue, and here I am, an elected official myself. Wonderful. What advice would you offer youth starting out in their career choices? I, you know, it's still the rule, Christine, that you follow your heart. Uh, you know, I mentioned my daughter, the reporter. Uh, I wanted to be a school teacher. She wants to be a reporter. She, it's her life. She has to uh, follow her dreams, follow her heart, and follow her instincts. So I, I, it's still very important that you have to follow your dreams, uh, go for it. I think you need to become as educated and as informed as you possibly can about your career pursuits. But one of the things I've noticed today, especially among young people, and I can't fault them for it, because they're raised in a, in a society where things happen so quick. Uh, you know, when we were kids, uh, you took family photos, you, you brought them to the store, you waited a week to see how they turned out. Now today you take a picture, you hit a button, and there's the photo right on the screen in front of you. And it's like that with virtually everything in our world. Things happen so quickly. I have seen too many times young people get on a career path and become discouraged so quickly because things don't happen fast enough the way they've been accustomed to. So the best advice, I know I do it with my children, and I think the best advice I could give to young people uh, you, you need to be patient. I know that's a hard thing to ask, especially when you're anxious to get going uh, in your career, but you still need patience. You need to persevere. Stay with it. Um, patience and, and per perseverance, uh, it'll get you there. Great. And in conclusion, with this upcoming November 2007 election, what would you like for people to know more than anything else? Well. Uh, see, I don't know if it always comes across when I'm out among my residents, but, but I would love my residents to know how much I love being the Oyster Bay Town Supervisor. It's great. It's a wonderful town, uh, wonderful residents that I serve. It's a very sophisticated, uh, you know, very well-informed electorate. It's, it's just a joy to be the Oyster Bay Town Supervisor. But speaking to the issues, uh, there are many issues. Uh, you know, affordable housing needs for our parents and for our children, which we in the town of Oyster Bay, uh, we're addressing, I believe, was, we're still the only town anywhere uh, in this great nation where we have actually developed a next generation housing zone where we set the price uh, of the housing uh, for uh, our children. And as we speak, uh, the first units are going up in this town and we're beginning to keep our young people here with us in the town of Oyster Bay because they have many, many constructive things. They're our future, and they're, they're what uh, the future of this town is all about. One of the things, though, that, that is of great concern to me, th this town is at a crossroads. Um, you have a number of interests out there which want to take this town in a very different direction. Uh, we don't need to build on every square inch of the town of Oyster Bay. We don't need to become the shop till you drop capital of the world, and we certainly don't need to become the sixth borough uh, of the city of New York. I love visiting Manhattan, but I don't want to live there, and many people who live in Manhattan love visiting the town of Oyster Bay, but they want to live in Manhattan, and it should stay that way. This town has a personality uh, and a quality of life that we all cherish, and you need strong hands uh, at the reins of leadership uh, uh, in this town to protect it. You know, one of the one of the issues that's that's out there and, and still prevalent even as we speak, you know, there's an application to bring a nearly one million square foot regional shopping mall in the heart of the town of Oyster Bay, next to a residential community, next to an elementary school. And I have people who are opposing me in this upcoming election who favor that. I mean, I find that outrageous. Uh, and all residents of this town should be wary of, of something like that. Imagine waking up one morning and seeing a shopping mall down your block or taking your, ch your child to school and having to negotiate the traffic uh, uh, around a, uh, again, a one million square foot shopping mall. This town board uh, has demonstrated leadership by standing up to the money-grabbing developers and, and, and uh, all the other money-grabbers out there who want to line their pockets with cash 
uh, on the backs of our quality of life and our environment. And this town board has demonstrated leadership. We have stood up uh, to protect the quality of life in this town, and, and uh, we're going to continue to do so. Good to know. Mr. Supervisor, thank you. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you.